Ayun. See, you're yawning again. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Benny and this is Drew and today we are going to review the trailer of Living in Bondage, Breaking Free. This is a 2019 Nigerian film. It's on Netflix and the short description says, uh, mentored by a mysterious tycoon, an ambitious young man faces a crisis when his rise to power draws him deep into the occult. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the director of the movie is Ramse Noah. Writers are Nicole Essing, Essinugo, uh, CJ Fieri Obasi. And this stars uh, Swanky J.K.A. Ramse Noah, uh, Kenneth Okonkwo, uh, and many others. Actually, it seems like the director also stars in the film. So mm. that's interesting. Take a look at this. All right, here we go. You know, you remind me so much of my younger self. I do? Growing up, we always wanted more. You felt you were never really where you are meant to be. Come on, we go. Look at this life. Do you want this life? And I can give it to you. Everything. One million. I'm making you think right now. One million. Fifty million. I swear to God. One to Baba. Let go, sugar. I'm over. Let go, sugar. I'm gonna get over that. Free, my boy. Mr. Richard, yeah. Amazing party you have here. What do you know about Richard Williams? The Six. This cult group, the Brotherhood of the Six, have been involved in countless murders. What do you have to do with all these killings? Mr. Zion, why is he after you and your son? If we go down, you go down. You are in grave danger. At a minute, they start to inch close. I snap their necks. When you take, you give. It's the order of things. This is no fucking game. Clock is ticking. Tick. Tuck. Tick. Tuck. What have you done? Nothing! Are you ready to get your key? <laughs> what key, sir? Key to the good life. Well, <laughs> that was that was something. I am definitely, you know, checking this out. I think it uh, it goes to this, uh, you know, this notion. There are two things, right? First is that, like the the rich lifestyle is so romanticized, and it it's you're made to believe that it's. So awesome. Everything is just party and fun and this and that. Like no one talks about what goes behind it, whether it's hard work, whether it's crime, whether it's something else, right? It is a give and take. And the second thing is like, as they say, there are no thing, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So someone sells this lifestyle to you, but then you don't know what's involved. Like you always have to take it with a grain of salt. But at the same time, if you're really, really poor, right? Um, 
you are bound to get really drawn to something like that, especially how the media and the world portrays the lifestyle of the rich, which they might not be necessarily the happiest people. I mean, they may or may not be, right? It just, uh, it's just so romanticized that anyone can fall into a trap like that, especially if someone is a young man or a young woman uh, in your 20s or so, you, you're going to fall into that trap because it's just like, you just think that you have all the money and you party all day and that's about it. But there's so much more to it. True, sure, I mean, uh, when you're young and it, especially if you're an ambitious person, you know, you're bound to be attracted by these things, but you do not realize at the time what the cost of that would be. And then uh, the thing is, once you get into that lifestyle, and once you get in, involved in these kind of things, it's difficult to break out of that. Uh, yes. It's like those connections are not going to be willing to, you know, let you go. Uh, so that's kind of, it's kind of, it reminds me of, you know, there was a story called the rat trap uh, in which, you know, uh, there's a rat trap seller and he, he believes that the world is a rat trap, you know, like cheese is bait for the rat. Uh, same way uh, money and riches these are things that are bait for us so the more we are uh, you know attracted to these things the more we are into you know we are uh, more and more trapped into uh, into into this kind of a trap you know and then it's more and more difficult to get out of it and the truth of the matter is whether you're rich whether you're poor whatever it is that you are i mean whatever your uh, economic status but you have your problems anyways. You are going to have your problems. Now, if you're a poor person, you have poor person's problem. If you're a rich person, you're a, you have rich person's problems. The problems are never solved just by money. Yeah, a person can be ambitious. You can want to have promotions. You can want to have a good lifestyle and luxury. But then it's a definite thing that no matter what amount of money you have, you can never get rid of problems of life. Right. And, and that's why I'm a big proponent of feeling that it's better not to take shortcuts, you know, um, because I'll tell you why. I mean, it sounds like, oh, that's the righteous path. But I want to say like in logical terms, it's better not to take it because as you gradually go up uh, in the economic strata or any other strata of your life, in that journey itself, before you become like a millionaire or anything, you just realize that you just find a new normal in life. Your, your, you, you have new problems, you have different problems, but they are going to be that. They are always going to be there. So it's better to build yourself ground up, you know, even if it takes a little more time to, because that's an easier way to handle things, right? Uh, that's kind of how like people talk about this is a strange analogy, but I, I do feel that, um, you know, kind of like um, those people who do psychedelics, right, to get enlightenment versus those people who meditate on a daily basis. It's a difference because one is like you earned it, you hiked, you hiked a mountain, you saw all the leaps and valleys, you fought it and you got to the summit versus being dropped in a helicopter to the summit. Those are two completely different feelings, you know? So you might, might uh, you know, get some output, but the outputs are going to be so very different. You are, when you do it by yourself without shortcuts, you are so much wiser. And if someone just hands you the money, the theory is like, um, say you hand, you know, some people money who, who live in poverty, they will lose all that money. For example, there are so many lottery winners in the US. They earned uh, like millions of dollars and then they went bankrupt just because they didn't have the skills to deal with it. And the other theory is like, if you take away all the money from the millionaires in the, in the world, they will in a few years again become millionaires because you earned, earned that, right? You, you learned those skills to get to that point, to maintain that. The... This was from a Michelle Pfeiffer movie. I don't know, it's it's random, but I remember like she was a teacher in one of the movies and there were all these troubled kids and one of the troubled kids gets an A and she says, 
it's easy to get an A, but the most difficult part is to maintain an A, right? So, so like this is this movie feels like it's a deal with the devil in a way. Like you are there is you don't know what's hiding in there, and a shot. Why would someone just give you things, right? There's just you you have to always be skeptical. Not to say that there aren't good people who wanna you know, help people. But if you are a good person and you want to help someone, equip them with knowledge to do it on their own rather than just giving them stuff like that, right? So any person who's just giving you stuff, like uh, as they tell children, don't take candy from strangers. That applies to even adults, you know, that if True. someone's giving you candy, be very, very careful. Um, this movie also kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, uh, a Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman movie called Eyes Wide Shut, um, where, you know, I forget how they get into this cult, but once they get into this weird sex cult and they didn't know, like, and then weird things, murders were happening, they didn't expect that. And then it's so difficult for them to get out of it, you know? So, you know, weird things go on, like, uh, that's why you you got to know from a, from an earlier age what your values are or you got to strive for to understand what your values are i wouldn't expect a 20 year old or someone even in their 20s to you know 20 year old to 30 year old i wouldn't expect them to know all that but that's what the goal should be what your values are you know rather than taking a shortcut because then if something like this happens, not only are you in trouble, but they also take your family hostage, you know, whatever, whatever, you don't know. It, it affects your loved ones as well. And then what are you going to do with it, right? So so it seems like the, the title of the movie is like, you know, bondage and... and uh, breaking free. Breaking free, right. Bondage and breaking free. So I'm hoping the main character does break free. But uh, it looks like from the trailer that he does some terrible things and things that might haunt him even later. So it does seem interesting to, to know like what happens in the movie. And again, as I said, you know, I, I like movies where there are more realistic approaches than happy endings. Uh, even if it's a blend of both, I would like to see that. But like, I hope that the the movie has a message, message for youth. You know, there was this movie called Requiem for a Dream. It's one of the most depressing, horrifying movies I've seen, which is on drug addiction. But after watching that movie, if a youngster watches that movie, they're not gonna do drugs. It's that kind of a movie. And I hope that this movie has that kind of an impact where when people watch this, it's so real and it's so gritty that you don't, you don't wanna take a shortcut in life, you know? True. You know what uh, had an, like what came to my mind was how that guy, he tells him, the, the younger fellow that you remind me of me, you know, and then uh, that fellow is really like all starry eyes and he's like, oh, I do, you know, so he's like, he's so happy that I uh, remind a very successful and a powerful person of himself. That means I have the potential to be like that. But he doesn't realize that this person is just trying to trap him into getting involved in various things, you know? And it's like, often at times you find people that even though they have gone through something bad, uh, they don't mind putting others in the same position, you know? So it, it, the world is full of every kind of people. There are good people, there are bad people. But then if somebody is, you know, uh, saying good things to you, you need to question. You need to question, what's the motive? Why is this guy interested in me? Right, and and that's just him brainwashing someone, right? Like I, that reminds me, I was, there was this one time and I was in, I was just, uh, I had come from a hike and I was in uh, in Redwood City in California and just having like a coffee. And I was like, my shoes were dirty and all that. Like I was messy, right? But I was just having coffee. And there was this really pretty girl who walked up to me and started a conversation, started with my shoes and just, I was like, why is she talking to me? She was so nice to me. She's like, you know, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. If you want to ch exchange information, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, you know, we should talk. I'm like, yeah, 
I, I would want to talk to you. So we exchanged information and then I, uh, you know, uh, flew out and went to another state. Um, and then, you know, we talked and I then I realized she's a part of a pyramid scheme and my shoes where the commonality they what they do is they find one thing in your looks or in your behavior that they know a little bit about so she knew about my sketchers or whatever and she knew about the brand and that was her talking point like it was almost so skillful that even though i disliked the fact that she was trying to you know con me into i felt like i was being conned into a pyramid scheme but i could couldn't help but appreciate that skill of you know starting a conversation and making a kinship with someone so uh, these kind of people are very masterful and i think in their heads it's very justified maybe in their heads they believe that they are doing something good maybe uh, maybe they don't see it as a bad thing maybe they they feel that uh, you know they themselves went through this and see everybody interprets different circumstances differently so they themselves didn't mind being in a cult and doing bad things and becoming rich they didn't mind doing that so they might be thinking that i'm doing this guy a favor but everybody's values are different some people are okay with doing are okay with murdering someone for money and others cannot do that so you know everybody's acting out of their truth and i would say like you know, that's why it's important to get to know yourself, what your truth is, before uh, you take any kind of shortcut, you know, understanding your values solves one, most of the problems. So, but, you know, a 20 year old or someone very young, you, they are the easiest targets. Any, any gangster real stories you watch or any whether it's the godfather, whether it's real life gangsters, you see they recruit those people as kids many a times or teenagers who are in the slums, who have this drive to do something, who want to make it big, but don't know how to, but they, they have that fire in their eyes. Even that movie, I think it was called Extraction with Chris Hemsworth and Randeep Huda, where this gangster in Bangladesh has all these kids recruited and one of the kids is feisty and he's like, I want you, you know, that uh, who will be the strongest soldier for my mission and brainwashing them like mm -hmm. it's a trap, like it's a, it's definitely a trap. And and the more awareness there is with younger people where, you know, you, you know more about this, like don't take candy from strangers, but why? Tell them why, you know, this kind yeah. of stuff happens. Tell them the reasons, tell them the real stories and tell them that riches are not everything. It's not like, it's not romanticism. It's, it's, it's hard work or a lot of compromise on your values or really shady things, you know? So like people think, oh, um, you know, like Bill Gates, oh, what a life or, or Elon Musk, they, they work so hard. They work so hard, way harder than a whole lot of people. And that's not something, uh, you know, is, is talked about at all. So, you know, people have to so educate. Like when, when you switch on the light as bright as it is, when you switch it off, it's going to be as dark. I mean, there's always a balance. There's right. always a balance. That's something that is to be kept in mind. Yeah. And I would think like, you know, these kind of things do happen in developing countries a lot, right? Like in India, this happens. I would think it happens in Nigeria. It happens in many other countries. And I, I'm glad that they are talking about some a story like that. And I hope that they, they do justice to... to um, you know, this kind of a story where when a youngster does watch it, they, they feel like, oh, we got to be careful about the, because this is the reason why, you know, so I'm glad that there are stories like that about entrapment and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm glad they're talking about this. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, your family members may try to say something to you, some people who care about you might explain things to you, but you watch a movie that makes more of an impact. 
you know, you know if it's a neutral neutral source right if a, if a friend true. tells you or if if someone else tells you that that does make more of an impact because you're always like oh my family is nagging me but you don't take them seriously so that's good <laughs> All right, guys, so if you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like, an actual like, and hit that bell icon so that you are notified every time we upload a new video. We do that every week. Also, leave us a comment to let us know how we are doing or if there is anything else that we should review. Until next time, we'll see you next time.